website is goldenmean.info. We do get a, more than a million hits a month there, and we have the largest personal website in the world and one of the largest personal video collections there. So please check us out at your convenience. Yeah? What's making that humming noise? So while I'm doing the talk, if you want to have a little personal experience of a fractal field or phase conjugate, um, you can just pass this around, and if you just slide it very gently on your head, like it's a royal crown, which it is, you'll see that the gold lined it up squarely, so this is at the front. That's right. That's right. Play with it a little bit, and then put this down over your ears. Yeah. Now, these devices, this is a phase conjugator. There's a cone, both of dielectric capacitance, or simply charge, what you call spirit, arriving in two cones from the side and the top. And this in physics is called phase conjugation. It's the or origin of self-organization in science, and it's the true physics of the meaning of the royal crown and how it indeed tested for pure intention. There's a microwave and a phase conjugate dielectric quality to the gold there. And you can have a bit of an experience, and you'll see indeed how then biofeedback could help you induce that intensity. Yeah. So just play with it. Yeah. You feel a little, and as you remove it, remove it very slowly, and you'll feel a little residual effect, usually. People are sensitive, particularly. So it's just some fun thing to pass around for experiential while we talk. Okay, so here I'm animating an equation for the golden mean spiral on the cone, which is the cone in which charge, or what you call spirit, energy, approaches DNA's core. So if we take the, the beginning point of that animation, we see that there's a, a golden spiral on a cone, which is the origin of the term caduceus. Here it is. And we even know the, the meaning, the origin of the word caduceus here. It came from the cadistu, which we'll talk about later. But that's the cone there. I don't know if you can see it from the back, but you see that cone? There's a spiral on a cone. And if I animate that spin path, I see I have two pine cones that are meeting at their tip. On the bottom right, you see the two red pine cones? And that geometry right there is the physics of phase conjugation. I ask that you look closely because that path for waves to converge called phase conjugation is the entire subject of today's talk. We're going to discuss that path as being the specific electrical path which energy or charge or spirit or chi falls into your DNA as a dodeca. It's also the path by which charge travels between electrons and protons and is therefore the cause of gravity. It's also the path by which charge travels from the dodecahedral shaped galaxy masses to the solar system. So all those systems create gravity because they use only that shape. So we're going to talk about that. And as you see, it's been called the holy grail in the blood because, among other things, it's the only three-dimensional fractal. And it is indeed, as you see, you can zoom in forever from any angle of approach. You also see this origin of the swastika and the concept of a cup within a cup and the cup that runs over. So most of you are familiar with the concept of the holy grail. So if we look at that spin path from the other angle, we see the side and top view of the caduceus, symbol of Hermes, DNA, medicine, healing, and doctors. In physics, that's called phase conjugation, and it is the topic of today's discussion. Phase conjugation simply means how can waves conjugate as in get together non-destructively. Exactly the same as the meaning of conjugal relations when you get married. <laughs> you find out which DNA gets along and what fights and what doesn't fight, and you check for which waves are shareable, yes? Mm -hmm. So that process just happens to be beautiful physics, namely the physics of phase conjugate optics, which we know accounts for self-organization in physics, and it accounts for time reversal, which simply means as you know, time just names rotating charge, so the ability to send waves faster than the speed of light causes them to enter time. And we'll talk more about that, but the summary is simply that no system will emerge into life or gravity or self-awareness that is not fractal in both space and time. And that is the discussion. I'm pleased to say the headline in New Scientist magazine, Fractality Makes Sense of Quantum Mechanics, uh, beautifully verifies what we've been announcing for many years, and I was the first to announce that fractality is the electric cause of gravity, and the mathematicians are getting on board. It's really wonderful. So I do highly recommend the most spiritual science you might study, which is that of fractality. And we're going to talk about what that looks like, but very simply, if you want to visualize a fractal, just imagine a rose, an onion, a fern, or a pine cone, where you can zoom in forever, infinitely, 
That's called infinite non-destructive compression or scale invariance and is absolutely the solution to virtually every mystery of life, including the spiritual mysteries. So I suggest to you that that picture of perfect compression, well, for one thing, it could have helped poor Mr. Einstein, who, who knew that infinite compression was the solution to the unified field, but poor guy, no ever, nobody ever told him what a fractal was. At any rate, so the title of this talk is called Fractality, the New Science of Life, Gravity and All the Universal Centripetal and Non-Entropic Forces. And basically, what we're saying is frac fractals, remember, visualize a rose. It's not complicated. A fraction of the all <laughs> is a geometry or shape for waves of charge which allows them to approach with perfect constructive interference. Einstein's dream and <laughs> the spiritual dream. And to conjugate means all possible combinations or crosses, for example, conjugal relations. So what we're saying is that this is the electric origin cause and mechanism of all self-organization, specifically including the concept of alchemy, meaning the access to the place of blackness, or the chem meaning black, or specifically access to the possibility of the making of a black hole. And more and more physicists are acknowledging that all physics, like atoms, are the discovery of how you make a black hole. For example, an electron is so fractal that it's a perfect miniature black hole. And you know how spiritual negative ion wind is. So the concept of perfect implosive phase conjugation or fractality is the description of the spiritual mysteries of implosion, fusion, zero point energy, omega point, still point, black hole, the bindu point, we have so many words for this, we need to be able to imagine how it works. So as an electrical engineer, I formulated and stated the hypothesis at the first International Unified Physics Conference in Budapest in 06 and then in 08 that specifically golden ratio optimized fractality, phase conjugation, is the electrical symmetry, mechanism, and cause of gravity, life force, and healing all biologic self-organization, it's a cause of DNA coherence, basically soul and the collective unconscious is an electric radio based on that what's called a phase conjugate dielectric. It is the cause of perception. The reason your perception sharpens when you wear that phase conjugator or sit under fractal air that Professor Krakow measures in her fractal tree is because perception is caused by phase conjugation, literally perfect compression of a field. And we'll, we're going to discuss how all, all of this is measured in, with pictures. That's the subject of this lecture. It is also the cause of color. It is the reason there are rainbows. Rainbows are caused when air is fractal. And Professor Krotkoff has showed us how to measure it. We're going to show you some more examples. Further, it is the cause and origin of alphabets and symbol making in general. In fact, to make a symbol is to be able to embed. It's the physics of alchemic transmutation, and boy, do we get some hits on that here in Prague recently. Many thanks to Vincent Bridges, who will be up tomorrow. We'll talk more about that. It is the cause of proprioception, ability to steer and navigate plasma, and that's the climax of this talk. As we know, individually we will die, and we now know that our planet has to go through a death experience. So the ability to navigate the plasma you call your spirit or ghost and we'll see the symmetry map of what people see when they die, which is basically the folding algorithm of their own DNA, is established when you understand how it is that plasma is steered. And you know we've been teaching for many years how people, how the shaman steers a tornado electrically. Today we're going to discuss how you steer that plasma storm, which Peter Taylor was so kind to tell us about last night. <laughs> so just some practical examples to understand proprioception and the double dorgy. You know what the double dorgy is from Tibet, right? You have these two balls on, on two ends of a stick. Well, if you were to do the movement with your Don Tien, a figure eight like this, right? Now I'm doing that figure eight like this on this axis. But then if I was due to the perpendicular of that like this, I now have two figure eights. I would do this with my, with my belly button, as it were. Now I could do that on three axes. Okay, now I'm raising my, lowering my belly button like this. Now we made a film with Lou de Bourbon called Caressing the Facets of the Diamond in which you make that six of those, six pair of those like this in sequence quite rapidly. And when you learn how to do it well, you, he dramatically discovered a radical increase in ability to juggle. You know, juggling, yes, <laughs> truly. 
which is an example of getting your phase relationship to gravity correct, which is called proprioception in, in, in general. And so that's, these are just some examples. Now, if you do that in a walk called the Infinity Walk, and I recommend the book, it dramatically eliminates dyslexia. And you can understand the physics. It's Infinity Walk, book by Deborah Sunbeck, a friend. And that figure eight walk combined with the cross crawl motion with your knees and hands causes cross hemispheric blood flow to pressurize here. The center of your brain gets hot. You phase conjugate and dyslexia is eliminated in a matter of weeks. So this, there's also something called trinitization of the light body. Ananda took that original idea from Norway. And when you do that here, here, and here with the six bodies, and it's powerful and dangerous, but there's evidence that people have actually disappeared when doing that. And we understand a bit about the physics, which is where I would like to introduce the next step. The physics of something I've called the green or red lion, but there's other names for that. But we know the correct Tibetan death practice when you walk into the tent and the Tibetan master has disappeared, there, the fingernails and hair are left, but at the moment he disappears, you see rainbows. The physics of the plasma propagation is the in initiation of the in increased fractality or compression in the electric field of the bioregion, and the rainbows are some of that evidence. I'm just giving you some indication of how useful it is to begin to think of your spirit as plasma and to understand how it's navigated. So this is a, a simple animation of the angles at which waves are entering this picture. For example, the angle at which gravity enters Sirius and Orion here is the same angle called the way of the nine or Peshmaton. It happens to be the same as that angle into DNA we're talking about. So this particular angle here is specifically the physics that's called phase conjugation, the perfect cone. There's hundreds of examples. It's actually the origin of the term Yahweh, uh, yod heh vah It comes from Theuba, which is a name for a star in Alpha Draconis, and we may get that far in the conversation. At any rate, so here you see that if you fell out of an airplane and you noticed you were falling to the ground, and you look down and you saw the mountains look fractal, you might realize you're being attracted by fractality. <laughs> and you might have an insight how fractality is the cause of gravity. But notice, <laughs> no, notice how you can fall in forever. You see, that's the point. It's perfect embedding, perfect nesting. And notice the Mandelbrot fractal, Mandelbrot meaning almond bread, is also a map of the top-down view of DNA, which is all based on golden mean ratio, phi, phi cubed, and phi to the sixth. So the idea of fractal is intimately related to the power of the golden mean ratio. Here there's a fun soundtrack to this video. This is where we play this for rock concerts for kids, but we, <laughs> we don't need to go there. But you just see how psychokinetic this is to see what it's like, how trance-inducing it is to truly embed yourself in perfect compression. And now we see why every living thing uses golden ratio. It's not just about beauty. It is beauty, but it's about physics. Golden ratio is the key to life because that's what allows biology to attract charge from gravity. Remember when Professor Krotkoff was beautifully saying the bird gets there without burning any energy? Your heart electricity comes from gravity because the fibers of Purkinje, which innervate the heart, are fractal. So biology's ab ability to be life is directly dependent upon golden ratio optimized fractality. And there's the visual. <laughs> is it complicated? No. <laughs> our little bumper sticker for this conversation is get fractal or get dead. <laughs> it's our little logo. <laughs> and you see, when we, when we say all life is energy, what we simply mean is that the unified field is made of charge. And when the charge stands as a wave, we measure the amount of that inertia, and that's called mass. So fractality is the cause of mass because it's what creates the centripetal force that allows that wave to agree to meet there every time. And that agreement to meet is the cause of mass, and the agreement for waves to meet is perfected in fractal phase conjugate symmetry. So we have lots of animations. It's basically about perfect embedding or donuts in a donut. I like to do this without a microphone in my hand, but let's see if we can do it here. See, Embed ability is Playboy magazine. No, it's about nesting donuts. <laughs> the ability of a little donut to nest in a bigger donut non-destructively is the way in which you survive in the mind of God. 
the, the mind of the plasma you call angels is based on this physics. So if you want to be part of a larger mind, you need to know that relationship in order to be properly embedded or nested. And that non-destructive embedding is the key. And that's how you're later going to learn about shaman steering tornadoes. You'll see the plasma of the ectoplasm of the shaman, the bioplasma extremers embed in the tornado. This is just about seeing, we talked about yesterday, that the plus and minus in physics <clears throat> and the yin and yang in, in psychology are both a name for centripetal or centrifugal flux. And when the centripetal and the centrifugal flux are perfectly balanced and come to a center, I have invented what's called, what I have called phase conjugate magnetics. And in that case, you'll see the like poles of the magnet attract. And in that case, you'll see we have reinvented water purification. And I pr predict lots of fun stuff as we proceed with that technology. So there's so many beautiful mysteries to magnetism if you begin to understand that it's about the symmetry of centripetal and centrifugal tornadoes. And when the two pine cones meet head to head, <coughs> the other secret is that all magnetic fields are inherently octahedral, like a diamond. And we'll discuss that a bit later. So basically, Sacred geometry is simply an introduction to quantum mechanics that when the wave divides evenly, the wavelength divides evenly into the circumference that causes geometry to happen, and it's called quantum mechanics. <laughs> but another way of saying, you are a standing wave. What is the role of mind among waves? <laughs> to persuade them to agree, in short. So in physics, <clears throat> physics discovered self-organization in phase conjugate optics. If you get two lasers to meet each other from opposite directions perfectly, even in four directions called four-wave mixing, you get self-organization, you get self-repair, you get time reversal, you get superluminal signals, you get what you have called magic. Magic me being a name for mag, matrix of agni, which means a matrix of fire in the center. Now, phase conjugate optics knows this well. It's very wonderful physics. But we have now shown that phase conjugate dielectrics Capacitors that which do this also self-organize. For example, you can phase conjugate rust and time reverse, and the rust in the metal will go away because you've taken it backwards in time. Or it will self-organize, another way of looking at it. But this, to, to, to put this into your language, the Anunnaki, mostly from Alpha Draconis, brought a technology here you called Stonehenge, which was a device to make a bioelectric field, which is phase conjugate. And the proof that it's functional is the cha measurable change in germination rate and the effect th that its original design was to eliminate aging. So the lesson doesn't have to do with, well, oh, you know, let's study those stones and spend lifetimes at what? No. The, the, the geometry is useless without the electric field theory. And the electric field theory is simply the science of making a capacitor that eliminates aging and causes life. And that's called bioelectric or bioactive fields. So we have made phase conjugate dielectrics, we've increased fermentation rate by 50%, and we've made phase conjugate magnets, and we've increased germination by that amount as well. But this is in the early stages. But do you see, your science of dolmen is basically simply the science of how to make electric fields that are bioactive. So I suggest to you, get onto the science and leave off with all the history, because history is a short nightmare <laughs> that it'd be better to wake up from, actually. So, so <coughs> Which is, is another way of saying, if you imagine pure principle, that wave will take you to something sustainable, the key to immortality. If you get in involved in personality worship and miracle worship and all that disempowering crap, then you don't get immortal as a plasma field. It's quite simple. So this is a, a one-dimensional model of phase conjugation that when waves meet in golden ratio, an infinite number of them can agree to meet. And if I put that in three dimensions, I'd have one of those into every face of the infinite dodeca ecosa fractal, the star mother kit, which is the geometry of DNA, earth grid, zodiac, Ezekiel's wheels, and now we know the universe, yes, and gold, and about everything that's psychoactive, and basically every living protein, which is five-sided for that reason. That life is based on that for this necessary reason. So that's the three-dimensional geometry. Here's the top-down view of DNA. Here are the waves adding and multiplying infinitely constructively so all the children fit, fit the nest. And this is actually the physics of why your DNA is an engine to make gravity. 
The reason your DNA, as Peter Garyeff measures, makes a little black hole, a, a gravity field, is because when the charge enters it, the phase velocities add and multiply recursively, constructively with golden ratio, which simply means that some of the charge, some of the energy of compression, becomes acceleration. The phase velocities add and multiply. It just means that a portion of the inertia of charge that entered changes from rotation, rotational compression, into acceleration, because the wave speeds it added, added and multiplies. So what comes out the center of that wormhole is charge that has been accelerated. In physics, that's called gravity. It is the definition of gravity. So when charge compression becomes charge acceleration, that's how you produce gravity. So capacitors, like your DNA, in this geometry, make a gravity field, replace the need for rockets, among other things. But a very important thing to know at the moment of death, <laughs> if you want to get there. Also helpful to know if your planet is about to be zapped, because you need to know how to navigate these tornadoes, which is where this lecture is going, hopefully. So this is all about constructive wave interference. We saw the picture. This is an introduction. We'll talk more later. But some of the proof that phase conjugation is a cause of perception, as Professor Karatkov really originally inspired me, among others, and also the mind mirror work, which somebody else mentioned. At Cade's work, they had golden ratio, but they didn't know it. <laughs> it was so sad. But anyway, Professor Karatkov documented that it was golden ratio associated with per peak perception. And then I invented a technology to make that shareable in a biofeedback environment with Professor Karatkov's encouragement called the Bliss Tuner which you'll see more about in a moment. So here is the cover of Nature magazine announcing that the universe is a dodecahedron, <laughs> and the cover of New Scientist magazine announcing that the universe is fractal. <laughs> neither one knows that the dodecahedron is the perfect fractal, and neither one knows that that's the cause of gravity. <laughs> oh well, they'll get there. But uh, actually, the science is now emerging quite quickly with mathematicians like El Nashi we'll talk more about. So you see, when you, if you actually map the location of the stellar masses on a universal scale, you find a dodeca ecosystem structure. And this is telling you that the only way any system can self-organize its gravity field and become mind, think angels, <laughs> is to become, enter into this geometry of sacred embeddability, the stellar de dodeca. So just to give you one example, which I find really fun. So surfer dude Garrett Lisi here, he decides that in the E8 symmetry, you can find all the subatomic particles and the graviton. So everything that physics knows about and gravity is all located in this lovely little nest called E8. Well, now it turns out that the, this E8 is based on stellations of the golden ratio. In fact, it's called golden quantum field theory by the mathematician whose work this is based on called El Nashi from Cairo, who who's one of my heroes, <laughs> who announced that fractalization is, amounts to the cause of gravity, along with uh, Andre Lind. So they're getting on board to agree. <laughs> it's really wonderful. So, so this is how you animate that structure, that in the E8 symmetry, if you color code the various wave node crosses, you get all the subatomic particles. In this case, uh, I think the green was the graviton, the gravity-making particles. So this is just more examples that if you really understand the origin of gravity, you can make it. And I tell you, at the moment of death, and when the moment when that solar wind comes, you do need to know how to make gravity. It started with a planet that's losing its atmosphere, and we lost our atmosphere because we didn't know how to stabilize our own gravity field. This is just uh, Andre Lind and uh, El Nashi announcing the mathematics and physics of this that amounts to the claim that fractalization is the origin of gravity. It, 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 and he, Andre Lind, that fractal nature of space may actually be the cause of gravity. And he calls it quantum golden field theory. And this is the state-of-the-art mathma mathematical physics on Earth today, which I find very encouraging. And again, El Nashi's 106 published papers on this question in all the advanced mathematical literature. This is serious stuff. This is not just a, you know, I admit my mathematic physics is weak, but as an electrical engineer, I can tell you how to build it. <laughs> anyway, so here's the point. When you ask how DNA radio effectively works to be superluminal and faster than light speeds, what you call non-local, it's not enough to say non-local. You need to know what that means. What it means is that charge propagation velocities become superluminally efficient. Another way of saying the electron is so fractal that its charge distribution is what you call God. 
You know, you sit under a good fractal sacred tree and you're feeling charge distribution efficiency. You called it grace in church or spirit in the Bible or chi, orgo, and baraka shaktipat. You have too many names. When it's only one unified field, it is charge. And if you think of electricity as being different than spirit, then you have schizophrenia and that is fatal. <laughs> it is a fatal disease because it caused you not to understand oneness. Then you won't understand why your transformer radiates nausea, affects your spirituality, if you think electricity is different than your spirit. Once you understand that it's one and the same, then you can fix the electricity of your house and make the map of your house look like a rose, which you will need to die well. So in the rose petal-like geometry, as these wave nodes line up in the fractal, what happens is the wave nodes enter stillness. And so if I were to drop one of these balls here, a billion balls down the row, one pops off faster than the speed of light. Or if I drop three up here, three pop off at the other end. The reason that this one pops off at the other end and there's no loss of energy along the way is because all the ones in between were perfectly still. Entering that stillness of the discipline of fractality creates charge distribution efficiency and that means that you have perfect distribution because of zero storage. Perfect distribution of, because of zero storage, we talked about last time, is the definition of abundance if you happen to be an economist. So if you would like an economy, you will require fractal money and we're on that case. But if you want life, you need charge distribution to be that fractal. In biophysics, that's called redox potential which is a measure of fractality in liquids. But in air, we're going to talk at length about what Professor Karatkov has been up to and do some pictures, but it's right on the money about fractality in air creating the definition of sacred space. So simply think about charge distribution efficiency as the mechanism of spirit. It's true, it's real, and it is fractal. So if we look at that, m most of you have seen these. If we take that self-organizing golden mean spiral in the shape of every charge field and simply animate it from the symmetry perspectives of DNA, which is tetra. You get the Hebrew alphabet, which is a software environment for allowing charged donuts to enter DNA. And biology can only remember what DNA can absorb electrically. That's why that's the origin of sacred alphabet. Yeah, Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet. And you see the origin of higher alphabets, which are symmetry sets beyond the tetra cube, which we'll get to later, the Ophana, Minokian, and Greek, and really the hypercube alphabets and the angel language of John D, which is one of the subjects of Vincent Bridges tomorrow, which we'll get to. So this is all about literally embedding yourself into charge fields. Another way to understand that, if you see the ABCs here, I don't know if you can see it, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This is just a view of the golden mean spiral on the donut with the donut removed. I haven't changed the shape, only your point of view, and you see the whole alphabet there. So get up off your cross and follow me. Don't live in flatland, you know. <laughs> you don't want to be a shadow on the wall of the cave. <laughs> you want to leap up and enter the next dimension. Well, to do that, you need to see how to enter the next axis of spin symmetry, which is the definition of dimension. Yeah. So this is a sort of an introduction to the concept that to symbolize is to embed. So when waves approach each other in that geometry called phase conjugate, Think fractal. Think like a rose. There are scientists like um, Tom Bearden who've studied if, uh, extensively phase conjugate electric fields and they find each other at a distance, self-organize and behave like consciousness. Visualize a little piece of your plasma aura finding a piece of the plasma aura of life on the other side of the room. How does it self-organize and locate? Physics has a language for that. It's real, it's understandable, we can discuss it. We're not going to do the whole dance now. But so phase conjugate optics, you have time reversal, phase conjugate magnetics, you have reinventing water treatment, phase conjugate dielectrics, corrosion reversal. We're going to accelerate metabolism. We're making bioactive electric fields. I tell you, the science of Enki to build a dolmen, what they called a shem, as in the she I will raise a shem or a jed unto the Lord, is the ability to make an electric field that is implosive and fractal and bioactive. And the correct language for that in physics is a phase conjugate dielectric. So as a stars and stones student, if you want to understand stars and stones and how they connect, I would suggest you learn about the electric field theory 
that makes those geometries bioactive. Why does the electric field inside Stonehenge increase germination and, uh, inc and eliminate aging? That's the physics that I suggest you meditate on. What is a bioactive electric field? Now, I admit, my background is an electrical engineer. I've been sparky all my life. So, you know, <clears throat> everything to me is an electric field. But I tell you, once you think of things in terms of the symmetry of charge and electric fields in plasma, it takes you out of those um, confusing and schizophrenic languages. Anyway, this is just a short introduction, just to give you another example. Phase conjugation, as I said, is the cause of color, something that Goethe missed, okay? So that if you look at the photon, which we now know is a donut, the photon travels toroidally. And if you see that the visible spectrum, an octave, is precisely divided into the primary colors whose wavelengths precisely predicts the angles. Remember, the cone of your eye, the only place you see color, as an electrical antenna can only be used to measure tilt or phase angle of the approaching donut photon. So the tilt of that photon donut is what you call color. Yes? And the angles, which are accurately, accurately predicted by the wavelengths of the primary colors, turn out to be 45, 90, 135 cube, and only two other angles, 63 and 117 degrees, yellow, blue. Guess what those angles are? 63 and 117 degrees is the angle right here, inside and complementary outside to make the face of a dodecahedron. So it is very simple, I tell you, color happens because the donut photons must orient themselves to the face angles of the dodecahedron, and that's what allows them to organize and be sorted into what you call color, the rainbow, yeah? And that explains, for example, also, if you understand anything about what's called negative green theory, that negative green happens because, <laughs> you know why negative green happens? You know, everything alive, chlorophyll spits out green. It's the only wavelength biology spits out. It don't like it. Why does biology not want to eat green? <laughs> the answer needs to be understood if you want to understand life. The answer is so simple. Here is the angle that causes green to happen. 90 degrees is the angle of the donut photon approaching your eye that you call green. If you register this properly, this would be red. This is the green angle here, and this is the red, and here's the blue. So when the photon approaches your eyeball that you call green, it's at a 90 degree tilt. Guess which angle is least phase conjugate, which is to say most likely to make destructive wave interference? 90 degrees. Any astrologer can tell you that. So now you understand the physics of why chlorophyll is green, because biology can't eat it, because it's a wave that don't fit. It's not phase conjugate. Yeah, very simply. And here's the proof. <clears throat> this is, uh, I was having this fun chat with Peter Taylor last night about his uh, hydrogen being feminine and carbon being masculine, which is a really quite a, a nice intro, I think. But from my perspective, the deeper physics of that, which you call feminine and masculine, is the fact that if you take the, the geometry of the center of hydrogen, the Balmer emission series, you have golden mean ratio, monoatomic hydrogen. It's a big fractal. It's a black hole. That's why it's the center of the DNA helix and where soul tornado lands. So the golden ratio geometries, which are all five-sided, if you interfere those waves by heterodyning, and you, we have software to do that, you can download it, thanks to Frank, heartcoherence.com, it's called a fractal synthesizer. So if you actually interfere an infinite number of waves using golden ratio, you create totally maximized constructive wave interference. Whereas, and so that's the pent structure, this would be hydrogen, or anything that's five-sided, every living protein. On the other hand, if you take octave, squares, cubes, tetra, octa, cube, all ratios inside are going to be powers of two. If you interfere an infinite number of waves by powers of two, you get maximum destructive wave interference. It's a downer. It's, it's just, it doesn't, it's not evil. It's simply, that is a structure which will isolate charge, squares, cubes, octa. This is the physics of architecture, the architecture of biologic proteins. Whereas, Every structure that's five-sided, pent, uses golden ratio, will create constructive interference and will distribute charge. So uh, the carbon was, you know, diamond lattice structure, was an isolator of charge. Whereas the hydrogen being golden ratio was a distributor of charge, which you said feminine versus masculine. 
At a deeper level, as we explained, if you take that carbon triangle and you unpack the bond just slightly with a little lightning, you make Buckminster Fullerene, and then the carbon does this, <laughs> and then you get magic. It's the hottest subject in chemistry today, Buckminster Fullerene. And I worked with Bucky for many years, or for quite a few years. So this is just giving you an idea of how wonderful it is when you begin to think with a little unified field thinking. Now, we don't have time for all these uh, um, th here's the slides on phase conjugate dielectrics, th that the fact that palladium is the key to cold fusion because it's dodecahedral. We're going to talk later about the physics of alchemy there. So this implosion is the solution to infinite constructive collapse and perfect damping implosion. It's the solution to voltage from gravity, all nonlinear energy devices. It's the only way through the speed of light, what pine cones do with charge. <laughs> It's the only way to measure bliss and euphoria in brain waves. You can use audio tone golden ratio to induce transcendence. And it's a solution to self-organization in general, origin of life force, origin of alphabets. It's just another version of what we talked about. So it's called the pine cone principle. The pine cone actually opens and closes slightly, just like your dolmen should, with the change of the weather to modulate the amount of voltage you're getting from gravity. And it is key to know that the voltage that comes from gravity is the key to life. That's important to know. This is just another picture of that same three-dimensional form. Notice that this form is the common geometry of every image, basically, in this whole set. This is the geometry of phase conjugate. And this is the famous Steiner and uh, Vortex of Life Fields of Form, Lawrence Edwards, taught here in the UK by Nick Thomas, who's wonderful. But he was with us measuring the voltage difference. The reason there's a voltage difference here to here in an egg, chicken egg, or in a pine cone, is the reason that life exists. If you don't know how to make that voltage and why it came, how it got there from gravity, then you do not know what life is, and you should not be a biology teacher. And you certainly should not design a building because you'll not be able to make life. You see? This difference in pressure, voltage, charge, between here and here, comes from gravity because it's fractal, and that is life. And there is no other explanation. So any biology teacher sitting in their aluminum building making cancer, pretending to know what life is, should be fired. Yes? It's not because I'm smart. It's because it's a very small planet and it's, you know, kindergarten here. That's all. It's not <laughs> so when, <laughs> when Schauberger hooked this up, he got a voltage difference from here to here. It's about 50,000 RPM. Jonathan and Dolly are doing it in implosion lab here in Plymouth. And the inside surface is coated with a phase conjugate material. And Schauberger got voltage from gravity and sold the generator to Hitler, sadly. <laughs> but... The, the principle is instructive. It actually, this voltage difference happens because the angle of this cone, the phonon wave, and the piezoelectric doping of the water. So you have a device which is literally sucking in charge from gravity implosively, and the output voltage is proof of the principle. Yes, oh, thank you. Louis just has to have me mention he went to a great deal of trouble to pick up this many tons of... Yes, yesterday, which is a real Schauberger vortex ed cone. Thank you, Louis, for being so dedicated. And we're about to build our own implosion generator. There's a, a line of those being made in Australia also. We should thank Phil Sedgman, the Amphorae. Yep. So, again, we don't... So this is just a, just a little introduction, a little taste. To be able to think with discipline for yourself about how creation happens, you must know that the only reason atoms are able to make gravity is because... Their nucleus is fractal to their electrons, period. That is the key to alchemy, and that is the key to physics, and the key to self-organization, and the key to gravity. So to understand that, the most important thing your chemistry teacher forgot. First of all, your chemistry teacher didn't know the origin of the word chem, so what good were they? But, but, but the fact is that the center of the nucleus is specifically platonic, tetra cube, octa, ecosa, the entire atomic table, the hadrons of the nucleus, precisely and profoundly self-similar to the electron shells in this nest, and this is what the electron shells look like. The clairvoyants can see this. Can you? If you could see this, you would know for yourself how atoms are making gravity. They make the inside look like the outside. That's called fractality, and that's how they hold themselves together. Now, you might say, oh, I don't want quantum mechanics. No, I tell you, if you'd like to hold yourself together, you need to make your inside look like your outside. And that is the electrical definition of compassion. You feel inside the same as the feeling of someone outside. And that self-similarity makes you an attractor for charge. Your hair stands up. You call it an angel hug. And you know they do know how to squeeze, as Vincent was telling us, right? 
the, we, we have many pictures of that. Here's the, we don't have time for all this stuff, but you see the atomic table and the platonic symmetry. So your chemistry teacher failed to teach you the necessary principle of self-similarity. Here's the real clairvoyance. This was called micro psi, but I would like to point out that in psi perception of quarks, that work has been taken into quantum, quantum physics in Phillips' book, Psi Perception of Quarks. This looks like somebody familiar, Dr. K. Do you recognize that? Oh, that's uh, a little younger, maybe? No, <laughs> slightly, but it's okay. So Dr. Karatkov, when, when he was, actually, Dr. Karatkov skipped over this slide. I actually saw this slide in your presentation today, but you, it was too fast. Yes, yes, all there. But Dr. Karatkov, he was working with these young blind kids, and they were being taught to see even though they were blind. He mentioned that. And um, what he, one of the things, the key things he measured was that one of the key characteristics that identified their bliss or peak experience state was golden ratio between the harmonics of their EEG major peak frequencies. So it's, you know, and their aura gets larger and more fractal. And so effectively what happens to those kids, they would imagine themselves in beautiful nature you would flip an electric switch measurable in your aura and you get fractal and you call that peak perception. I invented a device to sell that to bank managers. <laughs> it's called peak performance, the bliss tuner. So examples, here's the early example. I worked with Ed Monroe who taught at the Monroe Institute and he used golden ratio to induce transcendence. This was the first time transcendence was defined in brain waves and he used golden ratio Fibonacci in the headphones, the real physics of binaural beat. This is, we were speaking of Cade's work, the, the mind mirror, and what Cade forgot to do was measure the ratio of that frequency into that frequency. If they'd done that, they'd have found golden mean. Then they'd have got close to the principle. That's a phase conjugate geometry, and they defined it well in the mind mirror literature. Creative inspiration, personal insight, spiritual awareness, correct. But the physics is this is a phase conjugate or imploding charge attractor because of golden mean ratio. This is a picture of cross-hemispheric brainwave coherence. <clears throat> so this is when we early development of my invention, measuring my own brainwaves in golden ratio. See the caduceus, the attractor, the imploder. <clears throat> and here it is, we're looking at some harmonics in the EKG. This is my friend Foster Perry and the camera crew is making a film for the kids in China. And just at this moment, we're taking the power spectrum of his EKG, and he says, I'm sending love to the children in China now. And at that moment, the harmonic analysis of his EKG became phase coherent. Now, I invented a, the mathematics to measure internal coherence, which is why I'm credited in the literature with inventing the word heart coherence. It's based on the septrum, and we're not going to go into all that here. But you see how various devices that eliminate pain work this is the electric output of the scanner, and this electric waveform is a pain eliminator. But do you see why it's a pain eliminator? That's the point. Because this is a phase conjugator. It's implosive. The implosion center of charge is where destructive interference is eliminated and self-organization results. So pain was invented by God. <laughs> it's not a mistake. <laughs> to teach you where to place your attention to restore fractality, restore charge compression. Yeah? This is the other neuroscientist who now has agreed with me that phase conjugation is the cause of perception. And he, he did it because he realized that when you perceive, you self-organize your relationship to the boundary condition, and only phase conjugation accounts for that. So, and you see how the caduceus becomes, in fact, the picture of the essence of perception. So here is my invention, the bliss tuner. This is Delta theta, alpha, beta brain waves, cross hemispheric right, left coherence, the alpha 7 to 13 hertz. Here's the brain coherence, which we were the first to measure. And here is golden mean ratio one, two, three, four, up to five harmonics. This lady is like this. She's going, ah. Can you feel the bliss? It's, it's contagious, it has critical mass. It's electrical and it's real. It's teachable. It's a physics. Now it's true that that physics does have everything to do with pure intention, but the pure intention is, is assisted if you know the physics. And this is the physics. So you can teach people to make the frequency signature. And this is what uh, Edmund Marich were working on, that biofeedback devices like this can be used to eliminate addiction very directly. Marty Woodkey, IFW.org, Institute for Family Wellness. Basically, 
the average beer drinking alcoholic cannot make this harmonic in green, the alpha. If you can't make alpha in your brain waves, this part of your brain, the optical cortex, stays dark. So the beer drinker says, give me another beer, please. <laughs> and the reduced oxygen up here increases conductivity, and suddenly the lights go back on. Now, on the very day you teach that alcoholic how to make this, the alpha, on that day, the next drink of beer will make him feel sick. The physics is because now he's learned by shifting gears in his own brain waves, he's turned the lights back on. The eidetic euphoric component, which is a trigger from the alpha component in brain waves. Notice phase lock to the Schumann bandwidth here, yes? So basically, the key is self-empowerment. This is what I keep having fun with Edmund about, that you know, it's fine to zap the back of the head and help them past it. Marty calls that detox. But the critical moment is actually where you learn to make it yourself. That's when it becomes sustainable. That's why neurofeedback is needed to finish the process to make it self-empowering. The key being self-empowering. Ability to self-refer, defining self-awareness, et cetera, et cetera. So we have many examples from my invention. This is the Bliss Tuner. We have a audio feedback cues. To learn to make the golden ratio here, you put the ball on the stick and you get music in your ears, right, left hemisphere. You have a lot of fun you're making music in the brains. And you're learning to make golden ratio in your brainwave. So we're going to move quickly past these. We have lots of versions of this software. I would like to point out that when you make octaves in your brainwave and not golden ratio, there's only two basic states of brainwave coherence, only two. One is golden ratio, one is octave. There are no other forms of coherence in brainwaves. Octave and golden ratio. Now when you make octaves, you see the octave here? About 9.5 hertz, 10 hertz to 19.5, 20 hertz. This is a, cha a channel. She's a telepath. She's not having bliss. She's doing telepathy. It is a privilege to assimilate. I am seven of nine. I shall never feel alone, that kind of thing. <clears throat> the cube, the matrix, the board. I'm not saying the octaves are evil, but I'm saying the ability to switch back and forth is what biofeedback can help you with. It's the same as changing from hex to pent, and we'll talk about more about that later. So we don't have time for all the pictures. Here is, <laughs> here is a lady hearing bliss music and this is the power spectrum of her EEG in a, I think this was a 17 channel, 19 channel system. And at the crown, right at the top, <laughs> brainwave harmonics here, right here, where the hole, the pineal hole from Dr. Krakow's measure, you have golden mean ratio. Do you see that? So the elegance of your brain waves to make that geometry to phase conjugate to implode. And here's where we're talking about, I like to tease the TM people. You know, the TM people do great work, but they really missed a few important things. One of which was brain coherence. They don't know what it is. And the other is golden ratio. <laughs> so I like to tease these guys, but I'm, I'm not picking on them. But we had three PhDs from Maharishi's university, three PhD physicists who got their PhD in physics from Maharishi and the TM. And they're saying, they're saying oh, well, you're not supposed to understand consciousness. <laughs> You're not supposed to be able to measure it. I said, what? <laughs> it's simple. Anyway, so we, I like to tease, you know, double Scorpios and all that sort of thing. Anyway. <clears throat> so so here, here is um, just a very simplified example to get you the effect. If you say, I -om, om, if you were to say it in the right geometry, which Sister Mary Tabernacle called the quality of grace, which she meant charge, by the way, um, that... If you say ah, uh, here's, here's the ah, uh, here's the e, here's the o, oh, and here's the oo. But if you say that with the right velocity, the change of phase at the right angle, do you see what you make? The caduceus, yes, the cadistu. And that physics is what creates the still point. So you can actually measure whether you've pronounced your ohm with the correct velocity to produce the implosion point. The same way you could do this with your breathing. If you breathe like this, you produce a bliss moment. If you breathe in the caduceus, we call it caduceus fire breath. We do it at all our medit meditations. In fact, as uh, Irving Dardick showed, if you do your heart rate like this, you produce Olympic athletes. Yeah, it's the same physics. You create the correct compression geometry. So Bill Tiller, whom uh, was mentioned several times today, was with you, a really sweet guy. I was with him 30 years ago. It makes me feel old. <laughs> but Bill Tiller's whole book is absolute proof that focused human attention compresses electric charge. 
So from the point of view of Stanford physics, I can assure you that focused human attention does compress electric fields. It's absolutely measurable in dozens of ways. Of course, Bill doesn't have a clue how that happens, but he knows he can measure that it does happen. I'm here to tell you how it happens, and the reason focused human attention can compress an electric field, which is the key to your surviving death and steering the tornado that Peter Taylor was talking about, is to getting fractal. That is to say, getting the compression geometry correct. Another way of saying that is the magnetic map of your DNA and your heart and your bed and your house and your town and your planet, they all must look like a rose. If you accomplish that, then you will attract compression to center, and that will be called the charge distribution efficiency, which you call immortality, which is exactly how you will travel at the moment of death, and that's where this slideshow is going. So this is um, how golden ratio is involved in this nesting dodeca. You see the caduceus and the relationship to the dodecahedron, the, the grail animation. You've seen these pictures before. Attraction due to gravity. And, uh, of course, Kepler actually was right, by the way. There's a whole website that says Kepler got it right. The nesting of platonic solids is the, n the nature of the geometry of the solar system. It's real. It works. But in order to understand how it works, you need to understand that the planets are doing the golden ratio to stabilize the gravity field called the solar system. In fact, after extensive mathematics study of the solar system, spirosolaris.ca does announce the exponential order that caused the constant of linearity for the resulting planetary framework, the nesting of all the planets, is the ubiquitous constant phi, golden ratio. Just another example that indeed nesting, embedding, this is about the dodecahedron in the shape of palladium, which we're going to talk about if we get to alchemy here, and it was the key to cold fusion. The planetary grid, dodeca icosa, I'm sure you've all seen that before. Kepler's dream, standing waves. You see here, this is how gravity is made in a laboratory with a capacitor. Townsend Brown, uh, Naudens group in Paris. This is a curved capacitor making gravity. And this, called the Egyptian jed, is a curved capacitor making gravity. You see the geometry of the capacitor, you see the golden ratio, you see the result is an electric field that makes gravity that reduces the weight of the stones above the king's chamber in the pyramids. So this is called Migdal, or to tower, and the raising of the Jed, the Jedi Knight. You can call the Jed literally if you, are, if you have pure intention because you actually will then attract charge. And these are some of the devices, the early devices we made to make gravitational fields. <clears throat> so if you put capacitors in a cone like this, you will create thrust. And it's key to know that this is the mechanism behind the negative ions that help the, the B2 bomber fly and all that good stuff. So a bunch of experiments with capacitance, but this leads to a very important concept. The very important concept is, as the Mayans would announce, are you doing okay there? Thank you. As the Mayans would announce, unless the dream spell of the old ones was alive and awake in symmetry space, Earth would be blown away in the magnetic wind of the sun. I, I would ask that you humbly think about that for a moment. So here we're talking about how a nest of electric fields are making the centripetal force that's holding a tornado together. And now we're listening to the Mayans telling us that the dream spell of the old ones must be alive and awake. The dream spell is a name for the plasma field projected by your biology. This is called DNA plasma projection. That's what this is about. And we're later going to see, see this in form of the whale dreaming of South Australia. So the solar wind comes, and the ability to hold the gravity field of the Earth together is dependent upon the centripetal force here. If we've done our dolmen and our dreaming correctly, we will create the force that allows this to survive that solar wind. So this is an introduction to the plasma physics of a dream spell. Now we have too many, well, this is about how when women go back to the place of their birth, 
called the abraxis point, vivaxis. Their DNA is more fractal to that place, and they get more leverage on their dreaming. We're going to talk about how you measure song lines, dreaming tracks. This is a capacitor used to measure a gravity wave rust track we were talking about it at lunch, the Hodewanic Rust Track Recorder. Somebody was asking me about this at lunch, actually. But, and here's proof that it measured the gravity wave that was faster than the speed of light, just the way your brain does. So Weber's work spending billions of dollars to detect a gravity wave when this was a 25 cent capacitor. <laughs> Maybe somebody's not spending their money wisely. So this is the medical evidence that the healthy heart is a fractal heart. I'm not jumping around. The principle is still fractality, yes? So the heart that actually is harmonically inclusive is going to create an immune system. And the way your heart gets fractal and harmonically inclusive, when you make a picture inside your heart that's self-similar to what's outside, the outside is sucked in. And this is the voltage wave that causes your heart to fire. And your heart makes a bigger and bigger donut, the electric field whose radiance Stefan was showing how to measure with your increased aura size. The reason that this is the physics of compassion is that if you did a good job and made the picture of somebody else's feelings inside as if they were outside, that creates attraction. And that's what implodes and causes this suction right here. And my heart tuner invention measures that by increased harmonic inclusiveness in the EKG. It's called ascension. You know, ascend already, we need the space. So the concept of ascension here that's this famous Sedona bumper sticker. It's an old joke, and, and Valerie doesn't like my jokes anymore. She says they're getting old. Oh, well. So, so this is, this is um, measure, my invention measuring the phase lock between brain waves here, see them in phase, and heart harmonics here. You do a power spectrum simultaneously, the EKG and EEG, and then you measure to see if the moment of coherence of the heart and the brain are synchronized. I'm the only technology that can measure heart to brain phase lock and coherence. So if your lover says, well, you're not speaking from your heart, darling, you say, well, let's measure that. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we call this the uh, marriage counselor's dream. This is the heart tuner. The heart tuner bliss tuner system, I actually have an extra one with me. It's, uh, there's a special for 1,400 euros, two channel EKG and EEG complete biofeedback system with training software and hardware. And here you see the two separate ways we measure empathy. Phase lock of EKG, coherence of EKG. The phase lock is this direction, coherence is here. This is the sepstrom, second order power spectrum of the EKG. And here we measure that phase lock in the breathing heart rate variability. Yeah. Now we don't have time obviously for that whole story, but you can just imagine how powerful a tool this is. You're doing two channels of EEG and two channels of EKG. You can have a lot of fun. You can also use this system experimentally to measure life force. So here's what we're talking about, that, that fractality of the Stonehenge, see the fractal in the crop circle pointing to Stonehenge, was actually a device that was, here's a, in the orgone research, and orgone is a term that means phase conjugate dielectric, even though they don't know that. The, the difference in seed germination, that's an example of a bioactive electric field. Another example of an orgone accumulator would be, in a, on a larger scale, would be the Ark of the Covenant, we'll get to later. But the Ark of the Covenant was able to store radioactive material safely and be a voltage source for gold powder making because it's a phase conjugator, it's an implosive capacitor. This is the early map of the city of Prague. Now, I, you know, we did this in our first conference in Prague, and we learned that the original map of Prague was a rose. <coughs> And we noticed that we were able to lucid dream better there. But I learned from Vincent on this trip, and Vincent's up here tomorrow morning, that, in fact, Prague is also a grail-shaped volcanic caldera, which we're going to animate in 3D shortly, because of the meteor strike, which vaporized a gas, which is the key to alchemy. <laughs> I mean, this story gets... Uh, this is like, it makes Star Wars boring. Uh, this screenplay is going to be so fabulous. Because you know what Vincent else has figured out? Do you mind if I just mention this, Vincent? This is okay. Just a short hiss. That Vincent has figured out that John D, under the name 007, followed... No, no. Yes, John D went to Prague. And you know who followed him? The guy who changed his name and became Shakespeare and wrote plays about alchemy. And he's got the poop on this, the details. I mean, I tell you, the Da Vinci Code is going to be boring. It's so fun. And they're all getting there to write the physics of alchemy, which is what this place is about. It's fractal. So the, the short version of that story is when the meteor came in, like the meteoric rock that became the Kaaba, 
Well, they cut off pieces of the Kaaba, ground up the stone, and vaporized that, and that was the projective powder, which is the key to all the alchemy they did in those days. It's such a story. It's so incredible. And the reason why the meteoritic stone is phase conjugate, implosive, and the key to the powder that became alchemy, is because in the meteor you get that kind of temperature that only the phase conjugate material survive the compression and the heat. So a meteor was the first primal way to get the necessary symmetry into mass to actually create profound phase conjugation at the atomic level, which is the key to the chem in alchemy. So there you go. There's a thumbnail sketch of the next Da Vinci Code. And look out for Vincent's book. It's coming out. John D. and Shakespeare. Oh, my God. Here's our group in Australia, and we're designing this dolmen array here outside of Byron Bay. And look at the geometry, the cross-section of the dolmen here. It's five-sided. This is a volcanic basalt. It's profoundly phase conjugate, or at least uh, paramagnetic and dielectric. And this is the geometry of that structure. <laughs> this is shades of Stefan Cardino over here. And here you have a phase conjugator in the dolmen here. And we're going to produce seed germination in a bioactive electric field. The new Stonehenge, all physics. This is from Stefan Cardino. He's showing us how the angle of the right hand the right angle creates a shadow of charge. Capacitance is the physics of feng shui. We've been teaching this with Roger Green, fengshuiseminars.com, for many years. I want to thank Roger for being such a supporter for all this. Thank you, sir. So in feng shui, teaching the science of feng shui, we teach the reason that a right angle, a sharp corner, is quote-unquote evil. It's because that electric field is not phase conjugate. And if you happen to be as clairvoyant as Stefan, you might see that. It's pretty cool, actually. So that's an intro to some of his good books. And so here's some more work we're doing. We measured some seed germination in Italy where we built a bioactive electric field, which happened to be a Sri Yantra, actually. And here's some software that we're working with from Austria on measuring the earth grid in Dodeki Kosa. This is our first international conference in Mexico City on biologic architecture, 350 international professors. We've invented architecture. Now that you know how to build a capacitor that makes life, then you can define architecture. Until then, you don't have a clue. Right? So biological architecture is defined as the ability to make a building whose capacitance fabricates growth. That's it. There is no other definition. Then you'll know why you're not putting steel and aluminum in your building, da 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 da. So the sequel to this conference is this year in Cardiff, Wales, and the organizer for that is present. Would you at least wave? Yes, there she is. Uh, that's Alex Miller. She's organizing in Cardiff, Wales, with the architecture groups of Scotland and Wales. Biologic architecture sequel to this event in Cardiff, Wales, first week in October at two different venues. Real exciting. And Alex is going to pass out some brochures. So we invite you to the biologic architecture conferences, hopefully in collaboration with Feng Shui seminars and our groups there. So. There's some wonderful people. Here's Michael Rice, who will be teaching there. This is an example of fractality and creating a bioactive electric field in architecture. This is the shape of the village. This is the shape of each house in the village. This is the shape of the chief shaman's house. This is the shape of the altar where the chief shaman goes to speak with the ancestors. Now. This is called Fractality in African Architecture. I suggest that you watch the video for Dr. Eglash. It's all over the web. The links are goldenmean.info slash architecture, which all this information is at. Now, if you took, in fact, we actually almost have, or Karatkov certainly have. I admire him for pretending to be young so long. He runs every morning. And Valerie's after me to do the same, actually. Yeah, OK. But anyway, Dr. Karatkov went out with the aboriginals in, in actually, it was Peru, wasn't it? Or, yes, Peru. And he measured the place where they spoke to their ancestors. And he measured the fractality in the air. And just to be clear, the definition of sacred space is fractality because that's the space from which charge can radiate efficiently. So here's an example. This is this probe he was talking about. It's a titanium probe. We did some replications of Professor Krakow's work here. And under a sacred tree, we got extreme fractality and aura radiance. It's simply an antenna, just to try to explain it as simply as possible. The antenna is up there saying, can charge propagate? If there's a place for charge to go, then you get a big aura from that antenna. Now, you take that same antenna and you put it in a sinful, deadly metal building, and you come over here. And the charge from that air, charge from that antenna cannot escape, and neither can your aura. Do you see? It is not complicated. 
The definition of sacred space is quite simple. It's charge distribution efficiency. It's measurable. It's fractality. And that teaches you where biology is going to grow and where biology is going to die. This is the place seeds will grow. This is the place seeds will die. And that's an, a good example of the measurement of a, of a light bioactive electric field. Yeah. This is uh, Alex's beautiful design for the poster for our Biologic Architecture Symposium in Cardiff, Wales, coming up. Please do join us. We have lots of fun. We have Olda also coming in from, from uh, Prague. He's fabulous. He's, some people say, reincarnation of Steiner. And, uh, and the um, founders of the group in Mexico City are coming. So this is more on the Biologic Architecture Conference. This is, the, this is um, about two football fields across. This is paramagnetic stone. And these are trees. This is our Turin Conference Center where we work. And these structures, this Sri Yantra, here's how you, you make the magnetic map to find the correct place to put the center of your labyrinth, which is a dimpling algorithm caused by fractality. And these structures, this is a Sri Yantra in the Desert Project from Bill Witherspoon, another Sri Yantra, a huge layout of paramagnetic material in the land. These structures affect the weather, the climate, geopathic zones miles away. You can modify your bioregion climate with these structures. And the physics is simple. It's called Christos. The physics of why water vapor can only become a droplet if it finds a fractal is. You got these water vapor molecules wandering around, right? Who's going to teach them how to touch? Maybe that should be a bumper sticker for your child's school, huh? No, no, the water vapor molecule, yes. Who's going to teach them how to touch? What is the perfect cloud seed? Do you see? It is the centripetal force of fractality. So the next time you see the thunder clouds form around your well-doused labyrinth, it's not a miracle, it's not magic, it's beautiful physics, which also happens to be loving. Yeah? The physics of crystallization. Christos, simply describing what is perfect sharing for waves. Here's uh, the Ark of the Covenant. We talked about, you know, the way uh, when, Ak when supposedly Akhenaten changed his name to Moses, depending who you believe, and he uh, took the money. Uh, his cottage industry, the, the, the cash cow, was making gold powder for all the rich families. And this was the electric generator do it, the Ark of the Covenant, and the spark here. And, but it will be instructive to learn how this also will store radioactive materials. You know, Yuri Geller measured that focused human attention measurably reduces radioactivity. And that experiment is replicable. I suggest you meditate on the physics on your way to becoming a sun god. <laughs> right. so, so look, the reason radioactivity is reduced by focused human attention is quite simple. Phase conjugate fractality is what's holding the atoms together, right? The plasma field. The same reason when a million children sing at the same moment, the solar flares are dramatically affected. It's been measured multiple times. So you make the stuff that holds stars together. I repeat, you make the stuff that holds stars together with the plasma field that you centripetally organize with your attention when you get shareable. Introduction to the arc. This is a magnetic field. This is really a Stefan Cardino, actually, uh, kind of thing. This is a microwave under a town. This is one of the early devices Stefan and we did use. I think Stefan's device is more sensitive. DC magnetometer, electrosmog.de. This is important. Here we are in Australia. This is an airplane map of DC magnetic lines, measured not unlike the DC magnetometer. The white lines here and the color are DC magnetism. Now, this, these white lines here are literally the dreaming track, the song line of the aboriginal. Now, meditate on that. Why is it that where you can go when you dream, and of course when you die, is the place where there is a magnetic river, and that is measurable? And by the way, Rob Gourlay, who did this in Australia, is now measuring deep underground water that follows these using phase conjugate dielectrics. So you're... Aura, your plasma is looking for a place where it can distribute its charge. Oh, where is it? Where can I distribute my charge, right? The dreaming track. Now, where those lines meet like a rose in a fractal, that's where the aboriginals built their cities. But that's the place where you might be able to survive when you die, if you understand. So what the goal of death is to achieve charge distribution. That's real, it's simple, and hospitals need to know. So we're going to talk more about that. But here we're just, this is a little background on 
it's a, the recent newsletter, goldenmean.info slash Yahweh, the physics of the original term yod he vah he Yahweh is actually the double light cone phase conjugate Ontarian conversion, which is the geometry of Orion. And if you see that geometric shape more accurately, I think Vincent may come to this in his talk, I don't know, but this is from Vincent Bridges, and this is an introduction to the perpendicular relationship of the galactic, solar, and earth equators. And those equators nutate and precess toward 90 degrees called erection of the Holy Cross by Nick Fiorenza, which is one way to describe the compression wave that triggers the solar maxima 2012 related to the concept of the galactic superwave, Paul de Violette. And it's, it's just this three-dimensional compression phenomena. Galactic equator, solar equator, earth equator, Three equators nutate and precess, and there's a compression trigger there. So the sun needs to respond with orgasm, just like people need orgasms to sort their aura. So does galaxies have orgasms it's called Seifert galaxies, and the solar system must respond. So the sun's not there saying, oh, I'd like to toast all the DNA on Earth. No, no. The sun's there saying, unless your DNA can help make the gravity to hold me together during my orgasm, the sun, then I can't save my kids. Get it? So we need to learn how to make gravity with our aura. It's critical. This is just some more practical examples. The reason the, the dolmen, uh, Giza and Cydonia are at tetrahedral latitudes is that you must modulate the... Oh, I guess I don't have that animation in here. Huh. But I, I, you uh, modulate the spin rates of planets that the... If this is the planet spinning, when I accelerate this device... So if I have the quality of grace, I can rotate this in such a way as to increase the spin. And by pumping that spin and being able to feel that, I create gravity. Gravity is created when the phase relationship of the long wave of nutation precession is locked to the short wave planetary rotation. So retaining atmosphere on planets, the physics is that the dolmen stabilize the phase relationship of planetary spin to zodiacal spin, and that translation of vorticity from the long wave to the short wave is the definition of gravity, and therefore atmosphere maintenance. It's called planet taming in the original book, Two Thirds, David Myers, David Percy. But that's deep geobiology. Here is an example of spiral calendar that not only must, must space be fractal to self-organize, but time itself must be fractal, that you must establish a golden ratio in time if you want miracle synchronicity in your life. <clears throat> this is the example we talked about here. Measurement of redox potential, actually pH redox and resistance, it's called it's called bioelectronics of Vincent, but you can predict cancer by simply knowing if the water in your cell is fractal. It's called redox. So it's so profound to understand fractality, creation of life. So you do all these profound levels of diagnosis, measure saliva, urine, blood for redox, resistance, and pH, and you can do profound diagnosis. And our friends in Finland are designing this software hardware system, but again, it's all about fractality and blood. And here, if you, if you project well, this was the IGA ability to measure weak gravitational fields, and this is a Russian device, and it's kind of a long story we don't have time for. Oh, and here's Dr. Karatkov's slides. Oh, my, what are they doing here? Okay. <laughs> Notice that he forgot the hole in the aura here was caused by a CRT screen, wasn't it? I, I remember his slides so well. <laughs> okay. Anyway, this I like. This is our friend in Scotland, and she is actually eliminating infection. And you know how she pushes... Uh, spinal meningitis kinds of things out of the spine, infections that are hard to eliminate, you press in a high voltage negative ion wind and you ground that body. But now I ask you to meditate on this. She played with it for quite a while and she concluded that this will work if you're in a room with all natural material. But if you're in a room full of plastic and metal, it does not work. I ask you to meditate on that. I remind you that the plastic and metal, aluminum and steel, they are opposite to phase conjugate, they prevent charge distribution, and they kill every living thing. That is why you'd like to run and not walk to remove the steel and aluminum from your kitchen and your house, et cetera, et cetera. Now, Ed is reminding me, Edmund, that I must end here. Oh, God. Well, I wanted to do just this little thing about, yes, this part here. You know in the Sri Yantra, 
This is the seventh level of braid of DNA that makes a soul, and we talked about the alphabet thing a little bit. But in the Sri Yantra, the reason there are nine triangles in three dimensions at golden mean ratio is because that is the cause of the living plasma field you call your aura. And I refer specifically to nine chakras, seven in and two above your body. So here's this wonderful movie called The Last Mimsy. And they use a Sri Yantra to project a plasma field to return a memory into stars. Now, there is a, a group of physicists at Los Alamos. And uh, I was trying to remember the name of that physicist for you. But my friend there is called John McGovern. And they discovered that this huge plasma storm here hits South Australia and the whole planet every six or so 7,000 years. And I think there's some coincidence in the dates you mentioned, actually. At least a ma majority of the physicists at Los Alamos Plasma Research Laboratory are on this question now. And they found that plasma storm geometry in their computer models Oops. had nine donuts. And they call that, they call that Vishnu. There's Vishnu. Shiva. God or angelic beings are a plasma storm. They are a charge envelope. And yes, these plasma storms do hit the earth. Now the fact is that, as we see in the movie Whale Dreamer, that here's the more pictures of phase conjugation from uh, John Fanuzzi we don't have time for. Uh, in Whale Dreamers, we see, this was funded by John Lennon's son, I re recommend the film, we find that the aboriginal tribe who's able to resonate charge off the coast and call the whales are projecting that charge from exactly the place on the bite south of Adelaide in Australia where this plasma storm hits. They're studying how to steer a plasma storm. This is the climax that I intuit from Peter Taylor's talk we should study how we steer plasma storms, the scale of stars. That is the issue of survival from the planet. And it's an angelic problem, and that's why I'm bringing it up. So effectively, the whale dream is a very long electric wave. It's a phonon wave of great length. The ability to call a wave that long depends on, well, it depends on your coherence, yeah? Now, if you look here, I wanted to show you this picture. Sorry, these are separate here. Yes, but if you look, the carving of the shape of that plasma storm was seen on rocks around the planet. This is the original model from the physics laboratory, and this is the Navajo, Armenia, Guyana, New Mexico, Spain, China, all over the world, the, ab the, the shamans carved what they saw on the rock. And you could tell the latitude they were at by the angle they put the two dots at of the plasma storm. So shamanically, they knew that God is a plasma storm. And that's an introduction that I don't have time for, which is about how you call angels, actually. And this is a bit of an introduction to Vincent Bridges tomorrow morning. Vincent Bridges, among other things, is maybe the world's leader on Ophanum Enochian, high order angelic alphabets. Now, we didn't have time for that stuff here, but the short version of that story is that if you, t if you take the higher order form of that alphabet, Here's, here's this seven color map, you know, and you see that in the tetrahedron, yes? But now if you superpose that tetrahedron in a higher symmetry form, you get the higher alphabets. This, this is the programming language for DNA, charge absorption and DNA regulated by these charge domains. Now if you superpose, well here, you see the same alphabet that was Hebrew became Sanskrit. They just took the tag in off and put the, cro the vertical cross bars on. This was an ancient dragon script. It's actually the t-shirt I'm wearing. <laughs> but this, the Ophanum Enochian was an alphabet shown to John D. And it, the geometry, this is Vincent Bridges' slide, is a hypercube. He's going to tell you more about this. But the fact is that you can actually call plasma storms the scale of stars if you know how to invoke the elements of symmetry of how they put their body together, the language of angels, literally. And this alphabet, by the way, became Greek. And here's actually the names of angels, which we're not going to pronounce. It became Cherokee. It became the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. It became the Bon Po, see the swastika. The 
initiation ceremony for Ban Po and the Cherokee are the same. Make a flame with your mind. The symmetry required to do that, to compress the plasma, is the origin of symbol. Yeah, fire in the mind. And that alphabet then became the movie Stargate, if you remember the details. Yeah? So what we're suggesting is that it's time we as a planet did our homework to call the angels, quite literally. Now, there's another little piece of this story, which is the history of this dragon ancestry. The dragon ancestry, Alpha Draconis, Celtic, depends who you believe, introduces you to a guy named Enki and Enlil in Sumerian. Now, I just introduced you to this. Their, their alphabet, I call dragon script DNA, was called Uru Asa, Rovash Irash, which is the old Hungarian, which actually is related to the Finnish Hungarian, which became Lord of the Rings, came from Alpha Draconis. Quite a fun story, depends who you believe. When you look at the symmetry of that alphabet, you see the tetra cube and the words Enki and Enlil. Okay? Now, if you look at, at the structure of that history, the names for Enki... Kiliman in South America, Zoroaster, et cetera, et cetera. But if you really want to know who the guy is, I even suggest, I mean, Zechariah Sitchin tried, and it's very controversial, and Vincent doesn't approve, but I suggest that you read Anton Parks, Chronicles of Girku. This blows Sitchin away. He tried hard, but he didn't even get a clue about the galactic history, and all the details are there. He downloaded Enki's digital voice recorder. It was called Vril Urgur Girku Silmarion Toy Vril Fire Crystal. This is what it looked like. That's what Enki looked like. He was reptilian. His other names were Sam, as in Samuel, Patal, the serpent of Cyrus. Some people say Atun. This is a real history. This is a Kundalini experience. Now, this started in French, but it's coming in other languages rapidly. Those are the websites. And I suggest to you that if you look at the deep history of the dragon culture, you'll see that there was a real urge to love behind it. The real urge to love was they had a genetic problem and they knew how to fix it. Now, the last minute of this lecture is just to see that the plasma storm you call an orb, you know, uh, DNA trying to, to spit out charge. If you look at the orbs closely, you see donut and dodecaecosa. This is biologic plasma. The key to the physics of plasma is contained in the geometry of the orbs themselves. They're dodecaecosa, they're phase conjugate, and they're doing this. They're trying to launch biologic charge using DNA, exactly what you must do in order to die. So that's the end of the lecture. Here is Professor Karakov, the climax, measuring where your ghost goes at the moment of death. It goes to a place that's fractal, and we know why. Here's the number of hours it takes your, your aura to leave your body, and here is what you see when you die. Heinrich Cluve measured this, large number of near-death experiences. You see lattice, cobweb, tunnel, spiral, the Cluve form constants, the map to dying is a key to how to get your plasma into stars. This is literally a map of death. Now the reason that's what you're going to see when you die is because that is the sequence of geometries by which DNA learns to braid. Lattice, cobweb, tunnel, spiral. Your DNA is doing this compression operation to try to spit your aura through the speed of light because unlike your doctor, your DNA knows that it's fatal to be stuck below the speed of light. So the, the last sli slide in this series is this about the physics of death. Here is Osiris and his hat. Osiris's hat is the shape of your pericardium because that is how you steer when you die. If you get the muscles to change the shape of your pericardium, your heart harmonics change and you have coherent emotion. And your pericardium is the nozzle that directs the gravity thrust of your heart as a fractal rocket motor. Here's the reason your heart is a, a gravity maker, because its source of voltage is fractal, the fibers are perkindial. Your heart is creating an electric thrust like a medusa, like a jellyfish. By sucking, you navigate, yeah? You embed and you steer your own plasma. So by learning coherent emotion to shape the, the discipline, to shape the muscles of your own heart and choose your emotion, you, learn, you get the skill to steer the plasma bubble of your own aura at death. So this is the introduction to the idea that if you begin to think about the survival of your biologic spirit in real terms of discipline, you get the key to a true kind of immortality, the real meaning of sustainability. So thank you very much. I, we made it fast, but fun, we hope. Yeah. Thank you.